Robin Gagnon. And I'm Eric Gagnon, and we sell restaurants. We started the nation's largest restaurant brokerage firm, We Sell Restaurants, over a decade ago. You can find us online at WeSellRestaurants.com. We are on your radio once a week with the leading authorities in this industry, talking about subjects trending in the restaurant business. Tweet your own questions on the topic while we're on the air to our Twitter handle, Sell Restaurants, or post them on our Facebook page. That's Facebook.com backslash We Sell Restaurants. If we don't get to your question, we'll follow up on our social media channels. Our goal is to satisfy your appetite for acquisition, feed the need for restaurant reality, and serve up a recipe for business success. If you have any ideas for our show or comments, you can email me. My email address is eric, E-R-I-C, at WeSellRestaurants.com. In this week's show, we're discussing how to equip a restaurant for success. What it, what does it cost to equip a restaurant? How have equipment needs changed or evolved over the past few years? What are the latest trends? Listen as we keep you ahead of the game. And we are so blessed we're, because we're joined by some great people. First, we're joined by Joe Carbonara. Joe is the editor-in-chief of Food Service Equipment and Supplies Magazine, a position he has held since 2005. Joe also served as an editor of Restaurant Development and Design Magazine. Zumba's group's newest publication. In his role, Joe oversees the entire editorial process for both magazines from concept to completion. He regularly moderates webcasts hosted by the magazine, too. Prior to joining FENS, Joe was the marketing manager with the Smith Buckland Corporation, where he spent six years working with NAFM. A diehard Cubs fan, Joe has a taste for fine things in life, such things as Pab's Blue Ribbon. Joe, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me this morning. We also have the pleasure of having uh, Richard Gorwitz, who has served as the sales manager of Atlanta Fixture and Sales for over 10 years. Atlanta Fixture has a team of outside sales consultants who are the most educated and experienced in the industry, delivering value and service to their clients. Prior to the position of sales manager, Richard held uh, roles in food service manufacturing sales, working with broadline food service distributors around the state of Georgia. He has spent over seven years as a territory sales representative in food service, and his initial experience in hospitality was in operations as a general manager, so he knows the business from the inside out. Richard, welcome to the show. Welcome, and uh, thank you for having me. Great. Last but not least, we also are joined by uh, Nick Giacu, the president of Olympic Store Fixtures. Nick's unique experience in the food service industry started when he was around five years old when he started hanging out with his dad, a Greek immigrant and refrigeration technician on service call throughout the city of Chicago. Fast forward 35 years later, and Nick's expertise in the food service industry is not only in sales, but his technical and restaurant operational knowledge is unparalleled. This intimate knowledge of kitchen operation equips Nick and his team at Olympic Store Fixtures to assist restaurateurs with designing their kitchens from the very fabric of their restaurant's DNA. Last time we checked, he was fluent in four languages, English, Greek, Spanish, and kitchens. From the smallest of equipment design and elements to large-scale CAD drawings, Nick's and Olympic have done it all for some of the most well-known restaurants in Chicago and the Midwest, including Trump, Sumi Robata Bar, uh, and Baya, Henry, and Giordano's, the Dawson's, and many more. Nick, thank you so much for joining the show today. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, you having us. Okay, so Joe, let's get this session started off with you. As the editor of Food Service Equipment and Supplies Magazine, you're covering all the news in this business. Let's talk first about the challenging economy in recent years. How has that impacted the way food service operators approached equipment and supplies purchases? Well, Robin, food service equipment and supplies, um, the operators have, have really faced a number of different challenges, and it's really affecting the way that they look, to, the way that they're purchasing food service equipment uh, and supplies items. A couple of the things that, that are forcing increased pressure on their business, in, in addition to you know lower traffic levels, they're also fa- facing higher uh, business pressures in the form of uh, increased labor costs increased and increased food costs. And those are really, when we survey our readers, those are really the top two, I would say, um, the, the top two 
pressures that they're facing. So then those things really have the, the ability to impact every other aspect of their business. So as, as a result of that, 80% of the operators that we've surveyed um, have said that they've altered their purchasing decisions as a result of dealing with business concerns like those. 41% uh, have said it's impacting the way that they, they purchase food, and another 38% uh, say it's impacting the way that they're, that they're purchasing food service equipment and supplies. Um, how is it affecting equipment and supplies purchases? Well, first, they're requiring more competitive bids when they're buying something. Uh, instead of just going to, you know, one of the two guys that are on the phone here, they might ask for two or three people to to, to re- to provide a, a price on something. In many instances, we're hearing them repair rather than replace. There's a lot of equipment items now that, that would normally be retired, but they, they keep repairing them more and more because they don't want to invest the cash you know, right now to, to invest in something new. When it comes to supply items, they're, they're turning to more private label supply items um, with the hopes that that's gonna be a little bit more cost effective for them or a little bit cheaper. They're even maintaining smaller inventories at their businesses, uh, and that's both food and supply items. And in some cases, we're seeing them consolidate purchases to get better pricing um, from their suppliers. That's great feedback. Richard, do you see that in, in your operations Are you, since 2008? Have you seen some, some, some of the same patterns that uh, Joe just talked about? Uh, I have, and um, uh, I think that, uh, for example, um, when considering equipment needs, uh, property has uh, become very expensive, and this is uh, pushing uh, many uh, entrepreneurs uh, maybe into a smaller footprint restaurant. Uh, restaurant restaurant tours need energy saving, multi use equipment more than ever. Uh, one uh, equipment piece that fits that bill is the uh, combi oven, which uh, you find in a majority of the uh, kitchens over in Europe and not necessarily here in the United States as of yet. But I think that you're going to see more and more uh, of, uh, of combi ovens being used in kitchens uh, so that with the combi you can uh, have combined a few different types of uh, cooking all in one piece of equipment and you can use that piece of equipment to cook during the day and uh, you can also uh, use it at nighttime when nobody's there by setting it up for a uh, roast and hold and uh, the cost uh, approximately for a uh, for a full-size combi oven for the least expensive model is around sixteen thousand dollars but uh, and then that might cause a lot of operators to choke a little bit but uh, if you uh, factor Factor in uh, the, uh, the labor savings and the ability to have a smaller footprint. It's uh, it's an example of uh, of where I think the future is going. That sounds like a really smart strategy. And Nick, along those same lines, when a customer relies on you, what do you tell them is the correct answer between maintaining a strict budget or the sacrifice of that budget for the necessary piece of equipment? Well, I mean, there's uh, several, you know, several instances where customers have to make a decision. And, of course, uh, the question is, uh, when you sacrifice uh, a piece of equipment, you have to ask yourself a question. Does this piece of equipment define you? I mean, you can always cut your costs on your bottom line, but never do so if it's a deal breaker. Examples, you know, if you have a pizza restaurant, make sure you buy the pizza oven. Yes. Breakfast restaurant chrome griddle mandarin restaurant obviously the walk and definitely a barbecue joint you have to have a good barbecue pit it's as simple as that makes sense so, uh, in my opinion too as well as chiming into what john was saying it's definitely um definitely today's day is a green initiative energy star rated equipment lead certified building uh build outs energy comp energy company uh, offering huge rebates to motivate Local recycling, oil, cardboards, metals. I mean, you have to have it all. Sure. That, that's good information. You almost read my mind there because I want to ask Joe. Uh, looks like the operators right now are juggling a lot of needs when it comes down to equipment. You, know, you have budget constraints. Some guys are working towards being more green. Some people are trying to, to drive towards being LEED certified, try to fit, uh, like Richard said, more equipment into smaller spaces, ongoing operation costs, maintenance concerns. There are a lot of needs. Somebody's listening to our show right now that's thinking about you know all this stuff. Where, where should they begin to organize all that stuff for 
Oh, that's a that's a great point. I, I think you have to they have to take a step back. You know, when you look at operators, food service operators didn't get into the business because they love combi ovens or they love wear washers or chrome griddles or anything like that. And those are all wonderful pieces of equipment, but they, they get into the business because they have a real passion for the center of the plate, they have a passion for nutrition, they have a passion for serving people, you know, and they're they feel a real call to serve. So what they need to do is they need to go back and rely on, on experts like like the, the two gentlemen on the phone here with me today and, and work with them to figure out what it is that they exactly need. I think Richard's comments about combi ovens, for example, I think are really important because combis, in addition to being energy-saving machines and labor-saving machines, they're multifunctional. You know, operators, we're seeing them go into a whole bunch of different areas right now, and they're able to do more than one thing. You can steam with them. You can bake with them. You know, they're using them to crisp things. You know, a lot of school, you know, in school food service, as an example, you know, they're not allowing fryers in anymore, but you can't really tell the kids they can't have chicken fingers, right? Mm. So what they're doing is, is you're able to cook them in there and crisp them, you know, and they're helping you get the most out of your labor by getting giving you the option to pre-program them. So all it is is there's even options out there that are Bluetooth enabled where you scan the barcode on whatever you bring over there and it automatically cues up, you know, the, the timing and the heat and the recipe and the combination of heat and steam. So I think there's I think there's a lot of things out there that, that they can that they can do, you know, out there um, that operators can do today to get more equipment into a smaller back of the house. I think that's that's really you know, but what they need to do is leverage the expertise of, of everyone, you know, of, of the supply chain. I, I think that I'm just imagining the George Jetson kitchen as you say that. You know, you scan a barcode and then something comes out the other end. And that's really just amazing. And taking advantage of the technology is something everyone could definitely learn from. Well, isn't it? It's ironic because a few years ago, uh, I'm sure you guys remember they had, I guess it's more than a few years ago, there was a robot at the NRA show flipping burgers. Right. <laughs> and everybody thought that was it. We were going to get rid of people. You know, we weren't going to need people. We were going to become food factories in the back of the house. Well, we are a food factory in the back of the house today. But it's it's just as labor intensive as it's ever been, particularly as they start going toward more fresher and farm to table like ingredients and so forth. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I have a question I want to see uh, to get all three of you to weigh in on. And this one has to do with the mistakes that common operators make. So if if they're purchasing a piece of equipment, a new piece of equipment, Richard, could you tell us, for example, what are some common mistakes that an operator might want to avoid? Well, I think the main consideration is uh, it's very easy with the uh, access to the Internet today and uh, access to the wealth of information that it uh, provides is for uh, operators, uh, especially savvy operators, uh, know this. And that is, I think when you're looking at equipment, I think you need to uh, look at the uh, true cost of ownership and not just the initial uh, cost up front. Uh, And like, for example, I'll give you an example of another piece of equipment. I think uh, today um, many savvy operators are choosing uh, electric uh, fryers over gas. Uh, fryers put off much less heat in the kitchen versus gas, and this uh, saves the operators tremendously on their electric bill. Uh, the Varsity, which is an institution here in Atlanta, I know that uh, when they switched from gas uh, completely over to electric fryers, it saved them over a million dollars in electric cost over a year. And, wow. And, wow! That's and, a lot and of here in, Yeah, and here in Georgia, um, Georgia Power offers uh, rebates uh, uh, for, you know, for switching from uh, gas to electric. So uh, I think that's uh, one. That's an example of uh, you know a consideration that uh, needs to be uh, considered. I definitely agree with you, uh, Richard. And, and you know, with the, the way that the economy has been driving, uh, everyone has to make a more educated decision. I mean, today's restaurateur uh, is a much more educated consumer. They utilize uh, the advancements in equipment technology to lessen their workload, for sure. Taking advantage of fully, fully equipped restaurants, adding a mild remodel, you know, they're saving money that way, turning it into their own version of a culinary billion. So, I mean, for me, I see a lot of the restaurateurs today, um, they, they are more educated. They do the research on the Internet. They definitely know what product they want to buy prior to buying it. However, I have to weigh in with you, uh, Richard. The the issue that we are seeing also as a dealer is 
a lot of times it's all price driven. So when they're making their purchase, they may be purchasing the wrong piece of equipment. So as you were saying, Robin, earlier, what are the mistakes they make? You need to weigh into an expert. If you don't do that, you can buy the wrong piece of equipment, put it in place, know in the next two weeks, three weeks that you've purchased the wrong piece of equipment, and now you've just lost 50% of that value. That's so a great point, and we right. still see that in our internet orders. We see people place orders sometimes, uh, uh, not 100% sure of uh, really what they needed, uh, maybe purchasing a gas piece of equipment when they uh, needed uh, LP. So uh, certainly you're, you're 100% correct there. Or the wrong voltage, right, Richard? Right. How many times have you seen 208 volt three phase versus 240 signal phase? And then next thing you know, they're trying to figure out how they're going to solve that problem. So. Correct. No, I agree. Yeah, and you, I think you guys are you're, you're you're hitting a lot of great points here because I think one of the the biggest mistake we we find that seventy five percent of our operators tell us before they go to make a purchase, whether it's a replacement purchase or something for a new project, they do a lot of in their own research um, and they they do it online, you know, and and they're looking. So when they come in now, they're they're probably as opposed to the old days when they used to come in to see you guys or when you would pay them a visit, you know, you'd be bringing them the information. Now they've probably done a considerable amount of looking but it's it, they they do let price drive so much of what they do and that can be a really big mistake when you don't take into account total cost of ownership in terms of you know how much can a how much can you save by using something that maybe is a little bit more energy efficient or maybe, you know, understanding or some people now are really into, you know, they want to be environmentally friendly and green and we're going to specify all Energy Star equipment in the back of the house. Well, that's great. But if that steamer, let's say you, you, you put a steamer back there and that steamer can't keep up with, with, you know, with your workload and you need to put a second one back there where well, you just threw out any savings you had. So you have how about the, the amount of money you just spent on HVAC, you know, yeah. setting your hood on equipment that you're not really going to utilize. We see that all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to weigh in with an expert because if you can't, I mean, you, you know, the, the, the mistakes that you're going to make can be can be very, very big. Well, you, you, brought up, you brought up a great point there about, uh, you know, the hood systems and having a HVAC system that can keep up. And I think uh, we're seeing a, a big trend towards um, uh, open kitchens today. And uh, sure. when you have open kitchens and you've you've got it, you you know it kind of changes your needs for uh, for a hood system to be able to uh, to get rid of all the uh, the heat that, uh, sure. that you have to and deal with there. Today, and so today's uh, consumers going into a lot of uh, live fuel, so that causes another issue. Right, and then you know, from a cost standpoint, then you're looking at uh, with uh, where where the purchase of a hood system uh, might cost you seven thousand. Now, with open kitchens, you're probably in that range of uh, fourteen to uh, twenty eight thousand, and uh, and then the health departments are uh, wanting the operators, uh, even within the then within the uh, open kitchens, to uh, treat the air and remove the odors and the smoke. That's a good uh, okay. good information. Let me take this a little different direction here a little bit. Uh, uh, Nick and Richard, I know when you guys come see you, uh, restaurateurs come in, and I know for restaurant brokers, they always ask us, you know, how much do you cost? I mean, that's the first question. I'm sure when people walk into your stores, like, how much is this piece? But what is your, aside from that, what is the first question that they usually ask you guys? Well, well you know, well, it's kind of funny. Uh, Richard, if you want to weigh in, that's uh, fine. Sure. Uh, I'll wait. But uh, I w- what I was going to say, it's kind of funny. I mean, when, when customers walk in, a lot of times, you know, they may have done a lot of research on their own and they have a perspective of what they want to do. But the, I guess the biggest question, you know, they ask is, um, you know, they want to know, are they going to do the right thing? Are they purchasing the right equipment for what they want to do? And as a dealer, you have to ask them very important questions. You know, what, type of, what type of restaurant are you building? You know, what is the demographic of a clientele that you're trying to go after? You know, what type of cuisine are you going to serve? Those that sound like uh, those sound like restaurant broker questions. Do you feel the same kind of questions, uh, Richard? 
Uh, absolutely. It's 100% correct. I mean, that's our job, just like you go into a doctor's office and they ask you a million questions. It's the same thing here. It's, uh, it's, our, it's our job to ask them those tough questions. Uh, what's on your menu? And uh, you know, how much frying are you going to do? Uh, or none at all. I mean, can really help dictate uh, you know, what type of equipment. So uh, we listen to the operators and we hear uh, what uh, we have them kind of paint their uh, picture, so to speak, of uh, what type of a concept they're looking to, uh, to achieve. And then from there, uh, we uh, can certainly sit down and give them uh, the good, better, and best of their uh, options and help them be successful. Well, so, I think, and I think one of the, the common mistakes that people make is that they think that buying the space is one thing, buying the equipment is another, then the menu comes at a different point. You know, all these things are interrelated. You know, they're, they're all really dependent on each other. If you want to really design a, a restaurant that works well to meet the customer's needs and, and gets you the most efficient use of your labor, you have to understand that, that they're all dependent on each other. Um, because that's the only way to make the most effective use of any investment that you make. It's the right product, being, the right equipment being run by the right people executing the right menu for that demographic. I With a great workflow are. as well. That's one of the things that a... Uh, sure. That we uh, take pride in is helping our customers uh, with that so they can operate efficiently and make money. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And they have to know what they're trying to put out. I mean, a lot of times, I, you know, the biggest thing that I find that people make a mistake on is they don't really know what, re- what their restaurant's brand DNA is. And, and when I say that, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I use it as an acronym, uh, differentiator, nuances, and attitudes. So... Uh, you have to know what you are in order for the consumer, your customer, to realize what type of restaurant you're going to give them. A lot of times they get into these spaces and they're trying to have all these visions and all these ideas and going every direction and, you know, trying to give them as much food as possible. But the problem is if they don't know who they are, they don't define exactly what route they're born on they will never succeed. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. You have to know what you want to be when you grow up because you're right, there's a ton of great ideas, but if your dream is to own an Asian concept and somebody says, well, pizza is the most popular thing, let's try and put that in there, you know, that's, that's rough. That's, that's not going to, that's not going to necessarily work. So you need to have that filter to be able to view who you are and what you want to be. I think the other thing that people, the mistake that people have is, or that they make when they're looking, um, at equipment purchases and design is they look at what they are today, but they don't cast an eye toward the future. You know, if you're, if if you want to grow your business, I mean, even if you're staying within the same footprint, the idea is to be able to grow and and to feed as many customers as possible. Now, that doesn't mean you you go for the, the most capacity ever, but where can you be in three years or five years or seven years, you know, and, and is what you're purchasing and is the design and the flow you have in the back of the house, will it allow you to grow to where you'd like your business to be? I think that is... I agree. I, I think a lot that's of times great. They for, they for, sorry, Robin. A lot of times they forget the back of the house stuff. You know, like you said earlier, uh, John. Uh, the the most important thing is to see the whole picture. Okay, so I you think you can't just say I'm going to put in really nice front end of the of the restaurant, but then I forget about the wear wash system. You know, okay, that, that's a big thing. Hold that thought because we need to wrap up this segment and uh, do a few few little uh, bits of housekeeping um, because I just want to remind everyone that today's show is sponsored in part by today's restaurant, the food service industry newspaper, and one of our sponsors. Today's restaurant is available for the food service industry in both Georgia and Florida. You're listening to We Sell Restaurants, found online at WeSellRestaurants.com. This is Eric and Robin Gagnon. We're the restaurant brokers. Today, we're talking about equipment. A restaurant. Stay tuned. 